In this video, we're going to be solving the following problem in Python. We're given some numeric string as input, and we want to convert that string to an integer, the integer that represents that string. And the kicker here is we don't want to make use of the built-in int function in Python, which would make solving this problem pretty trivial. So here's some examples here. Let's say that we're given this numeric string here, one, two, three. We want to take that string and convert it to the corresponding integer, one, two, three. Note that we're also going to be concerned with negative integers as well. So we need to make sure that we convert appropriately negative integers with a negative sign equal to their corresponding negative counterpart. And etc. So if you're not familiar with built-in integer function, let me just open up a new tab here and then open up a Python shell. Uh, very simply, if we defined a string, let's say that we were given the input string one, two, three, notice it's in quotes, so it's a string. So if I say type of s, that's going to tell me it's a string. The built-in function in Python, if we say x is equal to int of s, so the int function is built in, it takes in some string, and then it converts that to an integer. So in this case, it's going to take the string 1, 2, 3, convert it to an integer, we print it out, notice there's no quotes around it. Indeed, if we say type of x, we're going to say that x is a integer. So it successfully converted that string to an integer. So this makes that problem pretty easy to solve, but again, the whole point of this problem is to try to do this without using the built-in integer function. So let's go ahead and create a function down here, which we'll call string to int, and it'll take some input string. And what we're gonna start off with doing actually is just checking if the number that we're given is positive or negative. So this is just gonna be some checking that we're going to do. And the basic way that we're gonna do that with a given string is that number is represented, or the string I should say, is represented as a negative string if the first character has this symbol, this minus sign. So if it has this minus sign symbol, we know that the number should be a negative number, otherwise it's not, it's just a positive number. So let's go ahead and just take care of determining whether or not a string represents a negative or positive number first before we go to processing this. So I'm just going to define output int, we'll set that initially equal to zero, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to check if the input string of zero, so the first character of the string that we're given as input is equal to the minus sign, then we know that the number that we were given or the string that we were given represents a negative number. And what we're gonna do there is we're going to set a variable which is called start index, and we'll set that to start to equal to one. And the reason for that is we want to eventually loop through all of the actual numbers in our string, and we'll want to skip over uh, the negative sign if it exists. So we're going to want to start our loop at one instead of zero. So that's all that's doing. And I'm gonna also set a flag which is, uh, is negative. I'll set this equal to true to denote that the flag is set to true because the number that we're processing is negative. Otherwise, if that's not the case, we just wanna start off at zero because we're not avoiding any net, uh, negative symbol or any minus sign. And we'll say is negative is equal to false. Okay, so now let's get down to what we're actually gonna to do to solve this problem. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to loop through each character in the string, and then we're going to make use of what we know about base 10 arithmetic to give us the actual integer representation of this number. So just as a refresher, let me go back to the terminal here. Notice that the number one, two, three, one, two, three. So this number can also be represented in the following way. So we can say 10 to the power two times one plus 10 to the power one times two plus 10 to the power three uh, plus, I should say, this is three times three, sorry, zero times three plus one plus three. Something's a little bit, there we go. Okay, so I think it, the power zero times three. There we go, so sorry about that last bit there. So all I'm doing here is I'm just starting off from the first let's say character in this number, and I'm saying, okay, the whole number of digits that we're dealing with here is three. Uh, I want to take the hundreds place, which is represented by 10 to the power two, that's 100, and I wanna multiply that by one, so that's 100. And then what I wanna do then is I wanna add what's in the tens place, which in this case is 10 to the power one, that's gonna give us 10. We multiply that by two, that's gonna give us 20. And then what we want to do for the ones place is we do a similar thing is now we say 10 to the power zero, that's one. And then we multiply that by what's in the ones place, which is just three. So if we perform all of those sums, notice that we're adding 
all of the results of that together, and we should get one, two, three. So that's just a basic fact about base 10 arithmetic, and that's kind of how we're gonna break down this problem. So if this was a string, we would step through each of the characters in the string, and we would apply the appropriate um, mathematical equation here, which would be 10 to the power of some exponent times something. So the exponent, is a function of how long the string is. So in this case, the string is of length three, and basically we start off at the length of the string minus one, which is gonna give us two, and then we multiply that by whatever's in the highest order here. So in this case, the hundreds place. So that's how we get this one. So then we sum the next element, which again is 10 to the power of, in this case, one, because it's the length of the string now minus two, and then we multiply that by the element that's in the tens place, which is two, and then sort of a similar thing for this last part of the number as well. So that's gonna be the general gist of how we're going to go about uh, breaking this problem down. So now let's go ahead and code that up. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to loop through the digits in the string that we're given. So I'll say for i and range from the start index, because again, we care about if the number is negative, we want to either avoid that minus sign if it exists or just disregard if it doesn't. Start from the start index and then go to the length of the input string. So in other words, process every single uh, character in this string. So we're gonna go through each one of those. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, let's create two variables. I'll refer to one variable, which I'll call place equal to uh, 10 to the power of some exponent, which we need to calculate based on the length of the string. And then I'll have another variable called digit, which will be the uh, digit that we're processing as we loop through the string. So for the place variable, let's call it place, this is equal to 10 to the power of uh, some exponent, which is based on the length of the input string. And then this is gonna be minus i plus one. So the plus one is there because uh, the way you know Python typically starts, if we're starting off at zero, we wanna make sure that it appropriately uh, applies this exponent with the, with the right number. Let's actually just make sure that it does that. Let's actually just print out the place variable here. Let's call this function on one, two, three. So let's say, uh, x, or let's say s is equal to the string one, two, three. And let's go ahead and say uh, string to int s. Let's write that, clear the terminal, and then we'll say python string to int, and we get the appropriate bases of 10. So we have 100, 10, and one. Let's go ahead and try it for a negative number. And again, we have 100, 10, and one. So it looks like it's actually getting the appropriate bases of 10 for either a positive or a negative number and that's what we want. So let me just go back up here to this loop. So we've got our place that's going to be 10 to the appropriate exponent. Now what we wanna do is going back to the terminal here, we want to take care of this guy. So the number that's being multiplied by 10 to the power of whatever. So that is the digit that we happen to be processing in the loop. So I'll go ahead and call that digit. Now, one thing we could do to get this digit is we want to eventually say this times this. So we want to eventually say, oh, okay, place times digit. Now, the character that we're processing in the loop, the way that we're gonna get that is essentially input string of i. Now the problem here is that this happens to represent a character or a string. And we could just as well do something like this where we apply the int function on this character of the number that we're processing, but this goes against the uh, you know, this statement right here that we should not use the built-in int function in our solution. So we're going to need to find out another way to solve this problem that's not going to involve that int function. And the way that we're going to do that is by making use of the ORD or ORD function. And if you haven't seen the other video that I did on uh, converting an integer to a string, I encourage you to consult that video first because I'll go into a little bit more detail about that function. But just for a refresher and just to kind of make this video as independent as possible, let me just kind of step through what the ORD function does roughly. So the ORD function is a built-in function in Python, and it takes a character. And the ORD function is going to return some number for every character, and that number corresponds to the Unicode code point corresponding to that character. So every digit, for instance, the digit 0 corresponds to the number 48, the number 1, or the, digit, the string or character 1 corresponds to the number 49, 2, 50, 3, 51. And then this is something that sequentially increases all the way up until 9. You can also give it characters like a or uh, colon or any uh, any other character is going to have a corresponding Unicode uh, number that, that corresponds to it. But one thing interesting that to note about the 
ordinal function and the characters is that as you go from zero to nine, it increases from 48 to 57. And what we want to essentially do is we want to somehow extract, if I have, let's say the character one that we're processing in the number one, two, three, or in the string one, two, three, I want to somehow extract this number from the string. I want to somehow get that, the fact that this string one represents the number one. And the way that I can do that is if I take the ord of this thing, this is going to give me the number 49. What I can do is I can just subtract from it some other thing. And what I'm going to be subtracting from it is the ord of zero. So this is going to say 49 minus 48 because ord of, of one is going to give us the number 49. Ord of zero is going to give us 48. If we subtract those two things together, those two numbers, we're going to get one. We can follow a similar pattern for any of the other numbers that we happen to be processing in our string. So for instance, if I change this from one to two, then I'm saying, give me what the result is of 50 minus 48. So 50 comes from the ordinal of the character two minus the ord of the character zero, that's going to give us two. So we can keep going up three is going to give us three. So this is going to be the process in which we're going to extract the integer information from the character information from the string. So instead of using that int function, that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to say ord of input string of i minus ord of the character zero. So again, this is kind of the, the base point that's going to allow us to extract that information. So just to make sure that we have it, let's just go ahead and print out place and digit and just see what we're at. So let me get rid of this negative sign here, write that, clear the terminal, and then just say Python string to int. So we have 100 and then 1, 10 and then 2, and then 1 and then 3. So we have the proper information. If we go back to the statement here, we have essentially 100 and then 1, uh, 10 and then 2, and then 1 and then 3. So we've got what we need there. We need to do uh, a few more steps. So the last thing that really remains in this statement is we take each of these chunks and we add them all together. So we need to just, in the loop, keep adding all of those things together and then return the result of that. So that we essentially want this process right here. So let's just go ahead and add that. I'll get rid of the print statement. And I'll say uh, output integer plus equals digit, or I should say place uh, times digit. So that's all we need there. So if we go ahead and print out the output integer, write that, and run it, we get uh, essentially 100, 120, 123. So that's exactly what we're after there. So let me just go back to this thing, get rid of that print statement. And now the last thing we wanna take care of is uh, negative numbers. So we still haven't taken care of the fact if this was negative one, two, three, uh, this is not, um, we essentially don't use this flag. That's why it's appearing red. We need to make sure that we account for negative numbers still. So if we go down below this loop, what we want to do is we want to say if the number is negative, then we want to essentially return the number times minus one. So we can actually flip the number that we're processing to a minus one. So we're going to say return minus one times s, or I should say output int. And then otherwise, if it's not negative, we'll just go ahead and return output int. And that should give us what we're after. So that's not red anymore, so that should be good. So now let's go ahead and try to uh, run this again. So we'll try it with minus one, two, three. We'll try it with just regular old one, two, three, the positive integer. And let's go ahead and try it with one of the other examples here. Let's try it with uh, five, five, four. So we'll take this, copy it, paste it there, and I'll change this. Uh, S is equal to 554. Five, so let's just go ahead and run this and see what we get. Uh, so I should probably print out the result of these things. So I'll print out that. Do the same here. Print this out. And then print this out as well. So we got 554, five, 123, and then minus 123. So 554, five, 123, and minus 123. And just to verify that it actually converted that from a string to an integer, let's go ahead and set this equal to a value. Let's just set this equal to x. And then let's print out, let's print out the type of x. 
just to make sure that it's actually converting to an integer. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the string, in this case 554, converting it to an integer, and then just verifying that the type that Python interprets x, the variable returned from our function, is in fact an integer. So let's go ahead and run that. And we see that in it, the number 554 is in fact an integer. So that looks like that worked as expected. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. The code, as always, will be available on my GitHub, and I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.